Hi everybody! Today, let's make a screw jack. Not just any screw jack. This is a screw jack with a twist. Literally. Yes. The head pops off. And pops back on like on a ratchet extension. And the reason for that is because I wanted to swivel. So, what's interesting about this screw jack? Well, it's got some interesting features. You know, it looks pretty. It's gonna have a hardened top with a V groove and interchangeable heads, which is its primary feature in my book. It's stackable and it comes up to about, yeah, six inches. So look at this. This is how fast you can set it up. Now you're already up to about, you know, three and a half, four inches. The fine adjustment is at the top. And there you are. Bam. Just like that. So that's cool. Uh, the other thing is I always try to make things easy. So this is all thread. The rest is all machine specific um, parts. So let's get to it. Okay, so here are the parts that we have to make for this particular project. We have a base. We have what I call a stage one bolt, a stage one ring, a stage two bolt, a brass ring, a separate head that will get pressed or screwed on to the stage two bolt, and of course, interchangeable head. Okay, so if you're gonna make one of these, here's what you're gonna need. For the base, you're gonna need some one and a quarter inch stock. I choose to use a cold roll steel, 1018. You may need a piece of three quarter inch all thread, commonly available on your hardware store. You're going to need one inch stock to create the ring for the stage two bolt. You're going to need the same stock for the interchangeable head. You're gonna need some one inch brass to make the press fit ring that will go on a stage two bolt. You need half inch stock to make the stage two bolt, which just fell on the ground. You'll also need uh, some three quarter inch stock to make the head that goes on the stage two bolt. And you need some ball bearings. I choose to use 532 size bearings. You could use 1.8 if you choose. Just changes the size of bits that you'll use. And you'll need a spring to go in here and a couple of set screws. Uh, I use the 1024 uh, set screws. You could use anything you like. So that is what you'll need. I'm gonna phase this piece off and uh, uh, that'll be the top part of the base part. Okay, next step, we use a sander drill. Okay, so we're gonna turn that down now to a length for a length of one and five eighths and down to a diameter of one inch. Okay, and here we go.
Always be careful if you're gonna do that. Keep your hands away from the machine. There we go. Now, you're gonna create that bevel. There's a 1 8 of an inch, 45 degree bevel that goes here. And change tool, and do that. Okay, so now it's uh, time to drill bore right through this uh, base at a distance of about two and a quarter inches so that we can, I can cut it off later and not have as much work to do. keep boring with drills until I reach a quarter, three quarter inch drill bit and that'll let the uh, stage one bolt run freely through the base. Well, now I've gone to a drill bit size of 11 16 I don't want to drill at three quarters because it'll make the uh, all thread a little loose in the base so I'm gonna bore the rest. So essentially this here is uh, 735 thousandths in diameter. And we're currently at 690 thousandths inside the bore. So if we give it an extra five thousandths, should be good. But to bore, I've extended and measured my boring tool. And now it's a matter of uh, going to town on this sucker. air gun but uh, I'm scared Mr. Pete might catch me. Okay. Currently at seven hundred and twenty thousandths. So I've got twenty thousandths to go. I'm gonna do set the carriage to go that way and I'm gonna let it work for me. So and I'll probably get a better finish that way as well. Set my cross feet for 20.
Okay, so the cool thing about this is you can get great finish on the inside of your board and you don't have to worry about crashing into anything. So that's just a little tip. Something I come up with on my own, I'm sure. Let's try that stage one bolt. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And the finish inside here is really nice. A whole lot better than you can get with a drill bit. So now, next step is to cut this off. Okay, I've got the cutoff tool ready. Now this is a high speed steel cutoff tool with 8% cobalt. And I tell you, it costs a few dollars extra, but what a difference. Where my, you know, usual high speed steel cutoff tool would explode, this one just plows right through. So certainly well, well worth the investment. Okay, let's go. step is to create the inset one eighth of an inch in and outward as well. And this will be the last pass. Sure, voila, I got my one inch. Excellent. Put a little bit of a chamfer on there, chamfer. Nice. Same thing on the outside, but ever so slightly, just break the corner. That's good enough. Okay. So that's it for laid work on the base. All right, at this point, what I need to do with the base is put in this hole here. Uh, the location of the hole is important because it, uh, it basically sets how far the stage one bolt can go up and down. You know, and it prevents it from leaving the base as well. So, the, after measuring all this stuff and the length of the stage one bolt, I determined that the correct location for me would be 730 seconds from the edge to the center of the hole. And that's 218 thousandths of an inch. So, Measured this with my caliper, made a little line on both sides so I can line it up when it's in the vise. And now it's time to give it a little punch. There we go. Now it's time to put a hole in that sucker and tap it to a 1024 for a set screw. I'm getting the base ready for tapping the set screw hole. I'm using a 23 size drill bit. I've already uh, used the center drill. There we are. All right, the hole is drilled. I like to take a little bit of a chamfering tool here and just clean the edge, give my chance, give my, give my tap a chance to bite in. Now this is a split point and uh, a tap, and they are fantastic. Okay, make sure that's lined up. With these, you don't need to break the uh, chip, you just 
keep on trucking. You can use drill and whatever, you know. But here, look how smooth that is. Amazing. And here I am. Completely done. All right. Give it a little bit of a cleanup. Steal the set screw from the prototype. And let's check how it fits. Perfect fit. Very nice. Okay. Time for the next phase of this project. Okay. So the stage one bolt needs to have a keyway setting. Um, and this is the prototype here just to show you. But the keyway is made with a 360 end mill. And it is 3 eighths from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom. And that way, this allows for this not to sit up here, which is quarter of an inch or plus. And then uh, the bolt will not extend so far that it falls off. And that, that's why I chose those particular measurements. Other than this keyway that you need to use an end mill on, you need to drill a hole right through <laughs> and up to a three eighths of an inch and then tap a seven sixteenths, 14 threads um, inside. Okay, now it is time to make a groove in the stage one bolt. So we're gonna go down uh, one eighth of an inch. A little clean up pass. Okay, so I've center punched the uh, stage one bolt and now I'm gonna drill right through until we get the three eighths and then I'll tap a, uh, a 7 sixteenths by 14. Okay, so before I make this stage two bolt to fit inside this stage one bolt, I know I want my bolt to fit in there and be relatively snug. And what I'm gonna do is take a half inch stock right here and turn that down to 437 thousandths. And then I'm gonna turn threads until I reach a pitch of 391 thousandths. And once I do that, I'm going to start using this stage one uh, bolt to see if it fits. And I'm gonna keep turning lightly until it does. So that's my plan. All right, since this is only the third time I've ever made threads in my entire life, so uh, I'm going to be running the lathe at a pretty slow speed in back gears and uh, take it one step at a time here. I've got the live center on there to keep rigidity and uh, everything appears to be set, so let's go. <laughs>
whole thread checking thing just to make sure. Hey, not bad. All right, I guess we can carry on. It's about a quarter of an inch here so we can inset that into the uh, the ratchet head and that looks pretty good 